This is a pretty typical scene in central Australia. It's a riverbed near Alice Springs, and the look of it tells you a fair bit about weather patterns here. Every now and again there's a great flood, and the riverbed will fill with water. There's a lot of it about, but most of the time it's as dry as it is now. And even though this is a mild rain shower, it's soaking into the sand, it'll drain away almost immediately. For most of the time, it's very dry. And yet, when you look around you, there are lots of plants. There are big trees here, and up on the banks, there's grass, and there are little plants covering almost all of the surface. Plants do very well despite the lack of water. How? By using every trick in the book. And one of them is self-pruning. Have a look at these red gums. They look pretty tatty, it's true, but there's a reason for it. When the water's plentiful, when the floods are on, those trees push a lot of it up into themselves and they grow fast. They put on a lot of leaves and uh, flowers and fruit. But when it's dry, they can't support as much as that, so they knock bits of themselves off. They kill their branches off, and those branches either stay in the tree or fall off. And so the tree is reduced to a living core, and it can tick over there for years, waiting for the next flood. It's just as well they do, because the branches themselves provide nesting places for birds, and the hollow branches that fall off leave hollows in which galahs and other cockatoos and parrots nest. And there are other tricks that the plants use. Now, trees lose most of their moisture through their leaves. And the gum tree, to be sure, has a protection against that in the waxy coat covering the leaves. That stops a lot of moisture getting out. But even that leaf is wide and flat, collects a lot of sunlight, and it does lose moisture. So the corkwood solves that by using for leaves round spikes. They work properly, but they're round and have a small surface area, and they lose less moisture. So this tree, too, can tick over, spending most of its life as an adult, waiting for the seasons to put out the next generation. But of course, all this bush is pretty dry, and it's vulnerable to bushfires. One good lightning strike on a hill, and the bush is ablaze. So another defense the corkwood has is to protect itself against fire. It gets its name from this extraordinary corky bark. You can see it's very, very thick and spongy. And if I take a bit off, you can see what it's like. Very light, spongy, insulating material. And there's more underneath it. So when this tree catches fire, it does this. It burns, but on the outside only. And underneath that black layer is perfectly good bark, protecting the inside against the fierce heat. So the tree survives. Unless the bushfire is really intense, which may kill the tree, but it won't stop the tree reproducing, because this tree has its salvation in its seeds. This corkwood, and quite a few other Australian trees, holds its seeds inside little woody containers. You can see them up there, a cluster of green woody fruit, rather like peanuts. Well, they sit there for quite some time until the tree is badly burnt or, in fact, it dies. And those trigger a mechanism in the woody fruit, and they open slowly. You can see, here's an old one. It's opened up to show the cavity in there that once held the seed. So the mechanism is the fire kills the tree, but it triggers the seed pod. It slowly opens, the seed is shed into the now cool ashes of the fire, and it grows there in the next rainstorm. Well, in that case, the seed is protected by a woody coating of the fruit. But with the wildflowers, which cover this area, the protection is in the seed coat itself. Flowers grow in the adult stage of a plant. And unlike the gum trees, wildflowers often have an adult stage that's very brief indeed. When the rain comes, they must grow, develop the flower, set the seed, and finish before the land dries out again. So for many of these wildflowers, the adult stage is brief, and they spend most of their life as seeds, waiting around sometimes for years before the rains fall. Well, a day like today might fool them. It's raining, but not very heavily. So if it started germination, they could run out of water before they'd gone through that cycle. So inside the seed itself, in the coating of the seed, is a chemical that protects them. It's a chemical that prevents germination. And when the rain falls, the seed may want to get going, but the chemical says no. It's not until the rainfall is heavy enough to wash that chemical from the seed that the seed can begin its life cycle. And of course, then there's enough water to sustain it into the next generation. That explains how they survive. It also explains why, after a good rainfall, the desert in Australia is so thickly carpeted with really lovely patterns of wildflowers. Curiosity. Curiosity.